does take us to our talk of the tape. The bull market, is it at risk? Let's ask NFJ's John Mowry. He's the chief investment officer there. He was one of the first to say last fall it was time to buy stocks. He was right. He's with me here at Post 9. I've got Mike Santoli here on the desk, too. We might as well widen it out because I want to get to the bottom of what's <laughs> taking place into this final stretch because now the Dow's at the lows of the session, down by more than 400 points. It's about a 425-point loss. I said to you when you sat down, you get nervous because you were bullish before most. Now we're questioning where we are. Good to see you, Scott. Um, I'm not getting nervous, but I do like a different group of stocks today than I did a year and a half ago. Um, maybe I'll first start with the first quarter. One of the factors that really drove returns in the first quarter was price momentum. In fact, if you go back to 2000 and look at quarterly observations of that factor, you're in the 97th percentile of observations. Historically, when you get into those uh, percentiles at that, at that ranking, you should expect a reversal. So I do think that there is room for uh, stocks to pull back, particularly those with the best momentum, where I think more interesting opportunities lie are in some of the traditional value areas as well as small caps and mid caps. Yeah, Mike Santoli, I mean, you, you're getting, I think, a real time and real world view, if you will, how jittery the market is yeah. to any major developments um, relative to geopolitics. That area of the world obviously is, is already on edge. So we're watching that. You know, oil moving higher is not great for the, the bull story about where inflation is going. It ratchets up sort of concerns overall. We make it that move in the VIX, too. Well, a lot of things came together around 2 p.m. Eastern time, one of which was the, you know, Biden tells Netanyahu he wants to cease fire right now. Another one was Kashkari of the Fed saying maybe we don't get any rate cuts at all because if inflation keeps bumping sideways. All of it happened at once. I look at yields plunging and oil up and the VIX where it is and say this ain't about Kashkari saying we might be on that's hold exactly on That's exactly right. I agree so with that. That's, that's sort of if you want to just triangulate. But what was the, the setting for all of this, which is you mentioned Marcus Jittery. The market hasn't had a care in the world for months. And so it's been very calm and placid and just rotating and been able to be per perfectly cooling off sideways. And I think you, you just got a little slippage in that rotation. Uh, the, the gears are slipping a little bit uh, for now. The S&P 500 is basically back to a level it first got to about March 8th, so the beginning of March. Um, we've been kind of playing around these areas where we first got to uh, from the March Fed meeting two weeks ago. None of this is a reversal of trend. None of this is anything but kind of frictional action because of this little jolt of uncertainty in a very certain, self-satisfied, agreed-upon, happy market. But this has always remained kind of this outlier risk yeah. that, you know, the market for the most part, Mike, has looked past, and that being geopolitics and more escalation in an already tense area of the world especially coming now when you've had a bit of a backup in rates. Yeah. Now, I know a flight to safety. You see That's what's right. happened with the yen and you see what's happening here with, with bonds sure. getting a bid and, and rates going down. But the market hasn't really fixated on what's been taking place no. in the Middle East. It's looked past it. It has. And, and honestly, if you had to kind of give your preferences for why the market has an intraday reversal, you'd almost prefer it would be one of these like, oh, we're clenching up because of a what if geopolitical scenario, because usually those are fleeting and usually those aren't, uh, you know, the major trend changers. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I do think that there's been enough of a kind of, you know, incremental uh, tensions raised, Israel, Iran. I don't want to speculate on the scenarios. Sure. It just shows you at a moment when a lot of people feel like the market maybe deserves to back off for some reason or other at a market when momentum has been carrying the day. Uh, when we do have some jitteriness just ahead of the jobs number, I mean, it's, that's coming on Friday, too, and there's two-way uh, potential swings on that one. I think that explains part of, of uh, how we just reacted to some of these headlines. For today. certain, I can tell you. I mean, By the way, it's also tax time. You're going to find, yeah. you know, I always say it's, it's murder on the Orient Express. Everyone did it. You know, you go through all the culprits, and they all tried to kill it. Yeah.